Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this video today about Luis Rivera's credibility as a witness. And I found some documents on the Leon County Courthouse website that talk about Luis Rivera's mental health and also his gang affiliation. And let me just jump right into those documents and then after I'm gonna talk about why those will be pertinent to Catherine McVanua's upcoming trial. Here we go. The state believes the defendant may attempt to introduce evidence, make reference to, argue, or otherwise infer that the jury should consider co-conspirator slash witness Luis Rivera's mental health. During Mr. Rivera's deposition, Mr. Rivera testified that he had been diagnosed with a lot of things, including blank and blank, which I will not go into. The state is concerned that the defense may attempt to introduce inadmissible and irrelevant character evidence that the jury should consider Mr. Rivera's mental health disorders. Throughout the course of the investigation and subsequent proceedings, no evidence has been uncovered, which would tend to show that at the time of the offenses, Mr. Rivera was suffering from symptoms indicative of mental health disorders. Furthermore, even if such evidence did exist, this evidence should be excluded as both irrelevant and impermissible character evidence. In this case, without evidence to support the claim Mr. Rivera was suffering from blank and blank and mention or inference to his disorder would be substantially more prejudicial than probative. An ordinary objection during this course of trial, even if sustained with proper instructions to the jury will not remove such prejudicial effect from the jury. The state hereby moves the court to order the defense not to introduce evidence, make reference to, argue, or otherwise infer the jury should consider Mr. Rivera's mental health disorders. I also want to bring up another document that talks about Luis Rivera's gang affiliation and although it would seem pertinent to the case, that he was in a gang and he was involved in Dan Markell's murder. He is also a witness to Catherine's case. So let me just read this document that explains why Luis Rivera's gang affiliation can be prejudicial to the jury. Courts have allowed for the admission of a party's or witness gang affiliation when relevant to explain disputed or unclear issues in the case of premeditation, motive, or intent. Evidence of gang affiliation was admitted in certain cases to show a strong motive the witness had to protect the defendant. Let's move on. In this case, without evidence to support logical connection between Mr. Rivera's gang affiliation and the defendant's motive to commit the murder, any mention or reference to the Latin Kings and their affiliates would be substantially more prejudicial than probative. An ordinary objection during the course of the trial, even if sustained with proper instructions to the jury, will not remove such prejudicial effect on the jury. The state hereby moves the court to order the defense to not introduce evidence, make reference to, argue, or otherwise infer the jury should consider defense allegations that Mr. Rivera was part of a gang. So in looking at Luis Rivera's history and you might look back at the past trial in October and see that the state had made an objection every time there was a situation implying that Luis Rivera's gang affiliation or his mental health or mental stamina was put on the table, those things obviously did influence the jury and this time you know looking at these documents you can see that it does tend to influence the jury so it's just something to think about in this upcoming trial and just keep your eyes peeled for the state uh, will be trying to make sure that the jury is not influenced by those things thank you guys for watching and like and subscribe uh, stay tuned for more videos on Catherine, and we'll be talking about her immunity deal, alleged immunity, and also plea deals. Thank you guys. Have a great day.